two, one. Hey, Shagheads, Curtis Tucker here with another exciting episode of a Shaggy Life podcast. This week is going to be another fun episode where I stroll down memory lane. If you guys are listening to this podcast on your favorite podcasting app, you're probably going to want to try to track down the video vlog version of this podcast episode because it's got a little video, uh, partner video that goes along with it. And I think you guys will get a lot out of that video. But if you can't, uh, for some reason or another, you never, you, you're unable to see the video, uh, I will try to describe um, what's on the video as clearly as I can. And so uh, basically you can go to uh, youtube.com slash at Curtis Tucker. It's basically the Curtis Tucker channel on YouTube and you can see the video there or go to curtistucker.com and uh, click on the blog post uh, with the episode about checking out, I'm not sure what I'm going to title it yet, something about the old neighborhood or Staten's house or something like that, but uh, I will have the video embedded there. So curtistucker.com, check that out. And if you guys are watching, on the video already. Hello, good to see you. Please subscribe to the channel. I'm trying to get more subscribers and more hours of video. So uh, maybe one of these days I can make a little bit of money off of the videos. Um, so I would love you guys to su subscribe. Also subscribe to the podcast. And that way when I release new episodes, you guys will uh, know about it. And I, uh, of course, still trying to get one episode a week. And really the only reason uh, I'm not able to is sometimes just, just don't have the ideas. But uh, so this one kind of popped up. So uh, I, I did do a earlier um, episode where I took you guys down Google Maps, down West Broadway, where we grew up in Enid, Oklahoma in the 1970s, and basically went from house to house and all the places in the neighborhood that we played. Um, and so today we're going to uh, look specifically at Staten's house because his house at 1523 um, West Broadway at the corner of Broadway and Pierce is uh, for sale. And so it is completely empty and they had an open house today. And so I thought, well, I'm going to cruise over to the old Hacienda and see what it looks like because they have done some changes. There's some parts of the house that are, uh, are exactly the way they were when Staten and I spent lots of time there, and then there's parts that have been updated. So, um, so we will check that out. That's what this episode is going to be about, is the video of uh, the house. Now, the cool thing about Staten's house is we did spend a lot of time there. Um, you know, at my house on West Broadway, I had the entire upstairs to myself. So we spent a lot of time there, but um, at Staten's house, he also had the uh, entire upstairs to himself, and he also had the trampoline in the backyard, but then he also had the garage that we built the haunted maze in. So you guys are going to get to see all of those areas as well. And then um, he just also had a cool uh, big front porch that we would hang out on and uh, sit and play four square and things like that. So uh, just a really cool house. Uh, his mom was also um, home a lot. So uh, we got to spend a lot of time there. And, you know, if we needed to go somewhere, she would take us. But uh, she didn't like have a full-time job. She did a lot of volunteering and stuff. And so, so she was there a lot of the time. And uh, I don't know, it was just kind of the place, especially for Staten and I, um, where we hung out a lot. And then uh, in the 70s. And then as the 80s came along, um, I, they sold it uh, in the early early to mid 80s and then state moved down to Texas and they, they moved down to South Texas. But uh, so this is going to be a trip down memory lane and uh, it was really fun. So, so basically, again, if you're listening or if you're watching, uh, you're seeing me right now and then I'm going to insert the video of the house, and then you'll just hear my voice describing each part of the house. And it is, I did slow the video down, so it is kind of in slow motion mode. Uh, and hopefully I can uh, make this 
timing and everything work out. So anyway, so uh, starting the video, again, Staten's house was at 1523. West Broadway, it was a, and it still is, basically looking from the outside, the house looks a lot like it used to. It is a white uh, stucco house, and it kind of, from the front, kind of looks like a cool kind of a fort. Uh, and then it's got kind of uh, curved archways in the front, which gives it that Spanish look to it. Uh, a great double sidewalk going up to the um, front stairs. Like I say, a huge concrete porch. Um, as you're looking now, this is the sidewalk. He did have kind of a curb around his sidewalk. Uh, there used to be, I believe, some really big oak trees right here in the front. They are gone and they printed a new one. And then this is, uh, they're um, uh, scanning our neighborhood, which is West Broadway, a really wide very cool street with lots of bungalows and two-story houses and uh, just a beautiful street. And then um, to the side of Staten's house, he lived on the corner was Pierce. And when we, um, when I, when Staten first moved in and we started hanging out there, that street there to the right, um, which runs along the side of the house uh, was dirt. And so uh, it was very solid dirt, but it was a dirt road back in the 70s when Staten first moved in. And then now uh, the camera is just kind of scanning the side of Staten's house, showing the stucco. And uh, that one little area up there on top, that was basically uh, Staten's domicile up there. And then uh, as you see the wooden fence there in the backyard, that actually was chain link back in the day. And then here is a close up of the concrete uh, front porch. And uh, like I say, right there where the stairs were, we would spend a lot of time just kind of hanging out and watching cars go by. This area right here, uh, I remember Bruce Bradley coming over and, and different people and we played a lot of Foursquare right there in that area. Um, I, I can't remember, I think there was some cracks um, that made it easy to know where the ball went and then that goes off to the backyard. So just a really cool, large uh, front porch. I don't remember there ever being furniture or us ever sitting in furniture. We always sat on the wall or on those uh, column things out there in the front, but a great view of West Broadway. Uh, lots of cars driving by. Um, just uh, spent a lot of time there watching people skateboard and ride their bikes up and down the sidewalk. And, um, and then another view, a uh, really cool house across the street to the west, which you actually can't see because of that big uh, kind of bush tree right there, but a really cool uh, brick house. Now this, uh, I started, you, we couldn't go in the front door because I couldn't get the door to unlock, so I had to go in the back. So this is the dining room and then walking into the living room and uh, basically looks to me, exactly like it did back in the 70s. There is the fireplace that, uh, and I'm gonna probably pause um, right here. Uh, but maybe I better not, because then I can't keep it up. But uh, that's uh, fireplaces where we took um, our prom pictures with a Polaroid. And then again, there is the dining room and the living room, just really cool old style wood. Uh, I don't think that's changed much, but we did not spend hardly any time at all in those two rooms. This was a room where we spent a lot of time. This was the TV room. There was a couch, there was some chairs, there was a TV right there. Uh, Mr. Pettyjohn had his chair and then uh, State and I would sit on the floor a lot or we'd sit on a couch over against that front window. And then this was a, a closet that was turned into a small bathroom right there off of the TV room. and. Basically, that's what we called it. And I believe the room had carpet. Now, Staten's going to have to maybe correct me on some of the things, but I believe that room had carpet in it. And then uh, you go down the hallway, and then this was the main bathroom, which has definitely been updated. Uh, got a lot of the old original woodwork that they haven't painted. They left original. This was uh, Mr. and Mrs. Pettyjohn's bedroom. Um, I do have the camera on wide angle, so everything looks a little bigger than it actually is. Uh, although this was a, a fairly large room, it just wasn't probably as big as I remember it. Uh, cool hallway, um, back into the dining room, 
And then these were the wooden stairs up to Staten's area. And uh, man, we spent a lot. I remember going up these stairs the night of the um, Ford Carter election. And I, I think I spent the night that night and then came down and learned that Carter had won. I, I don't know why I remember that, but I remember that. So when you used to come up the stairs, um, you would come up and then here was the railing and then there was a wall right there. Uh, basically really close, and it was kind of a skinny, short hallway. So all you could see was wall there, and then there was a room, a doorway on your left, that, which went into a small guest room. And, uh, you know, there was the, the uh, rail looking down the stairs and the little shelves there which stayed and put books and stuff on. And if you walk straight, basically you would walk straight into, right into there, into Staten's room, um, and then where that, so now there's a bathtub, but where that bathtub is, Staten had bunk beds right there and also had his phone hooked up and a bell out that window to the backyard. And then this was all Staten's bedroom, which was basically just a big open room. They now have, they've put in walls and made a closet, uh, painted it black, but uh, this was basically Staten's room. Again, it was all open, this little wall here was not here and then there was a wall actually a wall about right where I'm standing there that separated the two uh, small bedrooms upstairs and um, and there was no bathroom upstairs so if you had to go to the restroom you had to run downstairs and use that and then I'm gonna go uh, that's a mini split there that's uh, heat and air up top so going back through again this wall was not there this was all open this was Staten's bedroom, spent a lot of time playing games, uh, a lot of board games, a lot of stuff up, up here. And again, his bed was usually up against this wall. Uh, that would have been the doorway into the hallway. And then if you look, um, they've left the floor, they took up the carpet and left the floor. And you can see right there on the floor where the wall was, the studs and, and the wall. And right there was, uh, the separation between the two rooms. And if you're not able to see the video, basically they've had to put some smaller pieces of wood into the wooden floor where the wall was to, to fill in that area. But it gives you a great idea of where actually the walls were. And then right there was again, the doorway to the left went into the little bedroom. And if you went straight, you went into Staten's bedroom. And, uh, so it was kind of kind of cool, um, you know. If he had a bunch of us spend the night, or when I spent the night, we always slept in the bunk beds. And I don't know that we ever really did anything in the guest room. So there is the upstairs again. Lots of windows, a really cool um, looking space up there, and then uh, wooden stairs with uh, one little turn right here, and then you go down the stairs. And I kind of remember always going down and. Uh, uh, wooden handrail over here on the south side and then kind of always remember maybe slapping uh, I videoed the area up here kind of slapping that and then Staten's like I say Staten's books so then I went immediately down to the um, basement and this was uh, their basement they had the washer and dryer down there so Mrs. Pettyjohn actually seemed to spend a lot of time down there um, doing laundry and folding laundry I don't remember if all these walls were exactly where they were. Um, and I, I just, I don't remember there being this many walls and, and it, it didn't look that finished out. But these stairs here were very important. I believe they may have been, had carpet on them at one time, but Staten's phone was up there on the left, right there by the door with a long cord on it. And we would sit on these stairs and talk to girls on the phone. And I remember, remember that spending a lot of time on those stairs. This is the kitchen, and for the life of me, I do not remember the kitchen being this small. Um, of course, it has completely been renovated with new cabinets and countertops. This is the back porch. This was the back porch. There was always um, Coke bottles, uh, glass Coke bottles. Mr. Pettyjohn kept his Coke right there, I had his shoes there that he had taken off, and then this was the back door. And if we went out this door, uh, that was all backyard right there, which they've added that big room there. That room was not there uh, when Staten 
live there. And so that's kind of an add on, but going back into the kitchen, man, if you had asked me, I would have, uh, I would have thought the kitchen went further back, but, um, basically that is the kitchen right there. And, um, like I say, everything's been updated. Um, and then a very important area, I'm uh, going to kind of show you the kitchen here and then I'm going to flip around. And then there was a little breakfast nook right there. And man, me and Staten spent a lot of time there. I remember there was a table, just a regular table with chairs around it. And uh, that's where Staten always ate his cheese and crackers. I uh, remember him sitting there and folding his cheese and putting it on his crackers. Now uh, gone out into the backyard and this is the garage and there used to be a door right there and that was the end of our maze. Uh, people would come out of the maze through a door that was right there um, which has now been uh, covered. They put new siding on the garage but so this was the backyard again the wooden fence wasn't there it was a chain link fence uh, that little kind of circular thing in the middle was not there. This tree was not there, um, but the trampoline was always somewhere uh, there in the backyard. There was bushes kind of along the chain link fence. And then um, basically up there was Staten's bedroom. And again, that's where the bell to his phone was. And then also where he would put his speakers um, and we would play, usually uh, would put the Kiss album on and we'd listen to that while we were jumping on the trampoline. And then this was the back driveway. Uh, there used to be a basketball goal up there on the roof. And, uh, and so I tried to go in this door. So this would have been entering our haunted house and maze, but it was locked. Uh, so basically, but this was the entry to the maze. So I'm gonna have to go around. Uh, through the big, uh, the big door. And this is the garage. Uh, man, we spent a lot of time, had a lot of fun. So, so pretend like you just came in this door right here. And there was basically, this was kind of a, a small skinny room. So on your left there, that was a wall. It's open now, but basically you would walk. And then that area to the very front had a, a little half wall and the dogs could get in there and that's where the dogs could stay warm in the winter if they had the dogs outside. But there was a door right here. You would turn left and then you were into the main part of the garage and there was no, there was a wall to the right, right there. That used to be a wall. Um, and then this was Staten's area where Staten would build his part of the maze and it would kind of wind uh, around and I mean, zigzag here and there. I mean, a big, a big area. The main part of the maze uh, went through here. And then I think there was maybe something hanging down a little bit because you kind of had to crouch to get into this area. But then this was my area and it was kind of a smaller area. And so I would have my part of the maze basically come in, make a left. Um, you would go towards that wall. I, you know, I didn't have a whole lot of room uh, to be able to do much. And so um, you'd crawl through the maze towards this edge and then kind of turn around and then my part of the maze would go that way. Now there was a wall right there where that stuff is on the floor. You can kind of see where there used to be a wall right there. It was a wall, but it had a door in it, which took you into the last room. And then the last room is uh, we usually didn't have the maze in this room. It was just, we usually had somebody scary uh, standing up. And then again, that was where the door was uh, that people would, um, they'd have to step over a thing on the floor and then they would run out in the backyard and they were out of the maze. And so again, this room had a wall on the left and a wall in the front and there was only a little doorway right there. And so I'm gonna go back, um, you'd basically go this way. And then again, you'd be into my area of the maze, which is this, this kind of room here. And the ceiling, uh, if you're not able to see the video, uh, the ceiling is really low and it's slanted. Uh, and so um, just kind of a low ceiling, small room. And then going backwards, uh, you'd go back out into the maze. Uh, and then we also had band practice. In the early uh, days of our, our band, I remember one of our first practices was in this room and we hung a microphone from up there uh, in the ceiling somewhere. 
and um, we didn't have a microphone stand, so basically the microphone was hanging from the ceiling. Uh, and again, there was a wall right there which separated the big part of the garage from that skinnier, small um, entryway. So that was uh, the fun. And th th there was no maze there either, but uh, this was the um, entry to the maze. Um, Staten's Garage, again, we played uh, quite a bit of basketball right here in this area. Um, and we just uh, had the goal attached to the top of the, it seems like more people back in the 70s, uh, a lot of goals were just uh, attached to the roof of a garage. We didn't have a pole. And then this whole uh, thing here was just going down the side of the garage. That whole top roof part there was not there. That was all uh, uncovered. And uh, basically, if you went down the side of the garage, there was this kind of little spooky area here, which um, had a window into my area. And then if you went through that, you can see that fence right there. If you went through that fence, it would take you out uh, into the alley. But uh, going back uh, towards the house, again, this was... Uh, the back of the garage, uh, there used to be some big trees back here and that's, they would, uh, in the fall, the leaves would fall and right there is where we'd make piles of leaves and that was our graveyard right there. So lots of fun, lots of memories in that garage, in that backyard, man, lots of memories. The back of Staten's house, again, that area kind of right there was, is an add-on, it was not there. So basically, Staten's, uh, when Staten lived there, the house basically started, uh, or the backyard started about right there. And so there was the Mr. and Mrs. Petty John's bedroom right there on the left. And if you go down the, uh, the driveway, uh, there was the main bathroom there on the left, and then the little bathroom there on the left, and then the uh, TV room was right there on the left. And uh, this is where we... Uh, walk the girls down for prom to get into the car, but uh, this is the big, fun front porch. And again, kind of walking off of the porch out into the yard. Uh, really cool house. Uh, you can see uh, some pictures of it online. Again, 1523 West Broadway, but there is a quick little video um, of Staten's house. And so... Basically, back to me, hello. Um, I'm trying to think of what some of the fun memories, other memories I have um, of the house. Now, when the Petty Johns moved, Mr. and Mrs. Petty John moved down to South Texas, um, Staten was going to Phillips here in Enid, Oklahoma, and so he lived there by himself. And at one point, Todd, I think Todd was uh, having some marital uh, trouble at the time, maybe. So Todd moved in for a little while. Uh, Mike Stearman, I believe, moved in for a little while. But we would have some uh, some part. I would come home from college, and and we'd have some parties there. But um, just a fun fun house, and in that room, that TV room that I showed you, um, man, just uh, hours and hours of Saturday morning cartoons. That was kind of our go-to. A place to watch Saturday morning cartoons. For me, um, I probably spent, I, I definitely spent more nights uh, at Staten's house in that house than any other house other than my own. And in the summer, I probably maybe spent the night at Staten's house in that house more than I uh, slept at my own house um, just because we uh, spent a lot of time hanging out and um, uh, the one thing that we didn't do much is uh, had we, we rarely had band practice at Staten's house other than, like I said, that first, maybe the first practice, first one or two times that we practiced, we had it out there in the, in the garage. And that was basically so far back that Mike Stearman um, was still in town and was hanging out and he, he would pretend to play the broom um, he would pretend it was a guitar, and so since he didn't really play an instrument and was not really in the band, um, he would hang out and, and hang out there. So uh, the Petty Johns would always go down to South Texas for about a month every summer, and so uh, the summers that 
as I got older, I can't remember exactly what, you know, what year I started, but I would kind of watch the house and water the yard and the plants and um, all that good stuff. So just a really cool, fun house. And then if you uh, basically would go from Staten's house to the left, um, go down, you'd be at Brendan's house and Jason's and David's house. And that's where we played Musculans and all that other fun stuff. And if you went to the basically looking at the house, if you went to the right, that would take you down to our grade school, McKinley. And then a few blocks past that was my house. So Staten was basically the guy in the middle. He, uh, you know, basically if I was going down to play Musculans or see somebody, you know, if I was going down to see Brendan or Jason or somebody, I'd basically have to pass Staten's house. And uh, so I would always stop there and, you know, he and I would go or I'd see if he was home. But um, that picture of the front of his house uh, showing the front, you know, there was always banana seat bikes um, just laying in the front. I don't think we ever used our kickstands. We'd basically zip up to the front of his house, let the banana seat bikes drop where they were, run up the stairs, go in the house. Uh, Staten's house was where he and I almost always got our snacks. Uh, and like I say, um, he almost always got cheese and crackers and a glass of milk. And so I'd have to sit him, uh, sit there and watch him. And I, I don't like cold cheese. I don't uh, really like cheese at all, but I'll eat melted cheese on stuff. But he would take uh, the slices of cheese, fold them in quarters and put a quarter on a cracker. And uh, that's what he would snack on. And I also remember watching a lot of um, Star Trek episodes for some reason, and then Dallas football games on Sunday. We would um, hang out in that room, and watch, And I think his parents watched uh, Dallas football, and so we'd watch a lot of Dallas football games in there. So that is Staten's house, and again, uh, to really appreciate this uh, podcast episode, you need to go to uh, youtube.com slash at Curtis Tucker or go to curtistucker.com and find the blog post where I have this video and you guys can kind of take a, a tour. The tour actually went a little bit, it's about a 17 minute tour of the house. I actually thought it was going to, it seemed like it was going to take longer and, and give me more time to talk, but it actually went um, pretty fast. So, but that'll give you an idea. And then maybe as other houses like Brendan's, especially Brendan's house, if it ever goes on the market again, um, I do have some video of Brendan's house uh, from the last time. But if it goes on the market again, I'll get more video and then maybe even David and Jason's house. And I really want to get a video of my house um, on West Broadway. And because I have not been in it basically since the day we moved out. Um, so it's been a long time since I've been in it. And I think it's a rent house, I believe. And so there's uh, a lot of renters there. So it doesn't um, go on the market uh, ever uh, so they don't have open houses. So basically I'll just have to maybe wait until it's for rent and um, pretend like I want to look at it to be a renter and then I'll go uh, check it out. But that, that would be the, Stain's house would be the, the second w most one I wanted to see, and then mine would have been the most. But anyway, there is a tour of Stain's house, and uh, lots of fun stuff. Played lots of games, again, upstairs, um, Stratego, and You Sank My Battleship, and man, he and I played a lot of games up there. He had Lincoln Logs. I remember those being up there. And, uh, and a, a kind of a cool upper deck above his um, front porch. And he and I never climbed out a window on top of his house. I think we were so scared of his dad that uh, we knew we'd probably be killed if we ever ended up on the roof. So he and I never um, got up. And I mean, it seems like that roof would have been cool to hang out and sunbathe and throw things at other people from. But we did not uh, get up there and did not hang out on the roof, which sometimes I wonder, why didn't we? But it must have been because we were uh, afraid of Mr. Petty John. So, 
So basically, uh, I'm going to keep this episode kind of short. Uh, appreciate you guys checking in. Uh, send me your ideas, shags at shaggyduck.com or curtis at curtistucker.com. I've got uh, something in the works. And if you guys uh, follow my podcast or my blog, you guys are going to be the first to hear about it. I have um, teased a logo of what's going on. I've completely um, changed that logo to something I think is a little cooler, but um, something fun, something big is coming soon, and it's going to wrap a lot of things that I've been doing together. It's going to wrap it all together into one entity. And then another thing uh, is uh, we did make a trip down to see Staten about two weeks ago for our second trip to Granbury this summer. I uh, went down there to hang out and spend time on the lake, and Staten and I got to talking about uh, my book, uh, The Banana Seat Squad, and he was kind of asking uh, where, you know, how things were and, and how it was going, and I was kind of explaining to him how I was still trying to decide on a hook, or, you know, I, di- I don't, I, I basically have decided I don't want uh, The Banana Seat Squad to just be a... Um, story of growing, you know, what it was like in the 70s. I think, I don't think, especially for people that didn't uh, grow up in the 70s, I think to make it a movie, it's going to have to have a story, a hook, a something to get you involved in. And so that, that, that's kind of what I was looking for. And um, my latest idea, which I kind of liked, I told uh, Staten about it, and he seemed to think it was Uh, a good idea. And then he added a little bit to it. So I've got my hook. So I'm back on and uh, I definitely will be getting uh, at least the first chapter uh, of the book written. And once I get that first chapter, it uh, should cruise right along. And um, somehow I'm going to take either maybe like the first few pages that I write and I will post them on my blog. So again, you guys will be the first Um, to get kind of an idea of what the Banana banana Seat Squad is going to be. So even though it's not going to be just a book about us just waking up every day and watching cartoons and eating um, ding-dongs and uh, zingers, it's going to be basically all that stuff, but then also this kind of story of, you know, the story is going to be completely untrue, but it's going to kind of get you, you know, Basically, that's what the movie would be about. And then it's kind of like basically Stranger Things. So Stranger Things is about this weird phenomenon, but it's set in the 80s. Well, Banana Sea Squad is going to be about this hook, the story that I've come up with, uh, going to be set in the 70s. Uh, And then the cool thing is, since I grew up in the 70s, you know, everything in in my story is going to be true. Basically, it's going to take place in Enid, on West Broadway, uh, in these neighborhoods, in these houses, uh, I'm going to change the name of everybody, but all the characters in the movie will be either me, Staten, Todd, Brendan, Jason, David, you know, it'll be kind of a mix of all those. And, and I'll talk about the games that we played and the, the things that we did. So it'll be true, you know, basically the things that happened 70s wise, but um, I will embellish on the story to make it a movie story. So anyway, that's uh, we got a lot of stuff going, and um, I appreciate you guys checking in uh, as often as you guys do. Uh, tell your friends, and please uh, give me some show ideas. What what uh, which episodes you guys have the most fun with? What other things um, should I talk about? I still haven't done my review on Twisters. I think I may have to watch Twisters again. Uh, to be able to do the movie review, but uh, hopefully I'll get that done. So anyway, you guys, I appreciate you, and uh, don't forget to subscribe, and we will talk to you guys soon. See ya!